Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back today with some DIYs for you and today we're going to be doing some charity shop or thrifted DIYs together. So I've got a bunch of things here that I've picked up from the charity shops in previous months. Obviously at the current time they are all closed. So they've just been lying around the home and I thought we'd do a little upcycle DIY on each of them. So I'm going to take you through each of the pieces first so I can show you what they look like before and then we'll get cracking with giving them a little revamp to make them just a bit more appealing shall we say. <laughs> so let's start with these two. This was a present from my sister. She picked this up for me and she thought this was quite a funny thing for the garden and I agree. It did make me laugh when she presented me with this. She said it reminded um, her of me with the phone out in front of my face half the day <laughs> which does tend to happen but there we are. So this is two garden gnomes. It says let me take a selfie and yeah they're just having a great time with their phone taking a selfie. There's even their reflection inside the phone, which I think is really cool. Unfortunately, this one took a bit of a knock to the head, so we've lost the top of this one's hat, so I need to sort that out. I think we could do something with them for the garden. We'll see. We'll see how we get on with those. Next up, we have a plant pot, a classic charity shop find. So this one was 50p from Sue Ride, and I quite like the leaf designs on this. So we'll see if we can do something with that. I have some donated wallpaper samples from my friend Kate and she thought that maybe I could do something with these as well. So I'm gonna try and incorporate these into one of our DIYs today. Just a few little torn off samples. You can actually tear off samples in the shop. So if you are um, looking for some wallpaper, always save your wallpaper samples because you might be able to do something with them one day. And then I have some coasters that were originally from Ikea and these were 30p for a packet. So I thought we might include those, I'm not sure yet. And I also have some of this cord which came from Sense. This is great for DIYs, there's so many things you can do with this. And this was £1.25. Then I have two trays, these came from Ald Life Charity Shop and these were 50p each. They have like a mirrored kind of effect on the base and then the wooden surrounds and they also fit into each other. And then we have one more thing, a broken old chair. Now this actually was something that I found on the street, all broken up like this. It's in three pieces, so someone was throwing that out. So we're gonna try to see if we can fix this and yeah, see if we can make it back into a working chair because I really like the design of it. And yeah, if we can fix that, I'll be really happy. So lots to be cracking on with today. I've got no idea what we're going to be doing with these just yet, but that's all part of the fun. So we'll just have a go and see how they turn out. <laughs> Wish me luck. So before we get into this, if you're new here, do click subscribe. I'm posting new videos every single week. And if you enjoy these thrifted charity shop DIYs, then do give this video a thumbs up. Okay, first things first, I wanna give these all a really thorough wash. Anything that I pick up from the thrift stores, I always make sure I wash so it's nice and clean. And of course, especially at the current time, if you have found anything out and about, that kind of thing, then obviously make sure to disinfect it and make sure it's super clean. And the place that I like to clean things is in the bath. I find it easiest to do it in there and I'm using some universal degreaser. So I'm just going in with a scrubbing brush to remove any grease and grime from the chair and then giving it a good rinse off with the shower. I think with thrifted pieces or anything that you do find from the charity shop, giving it a good clean is one of the best ways you can start to bring it back to its new life. So I'm giving the trays a good clean as well. I'm laying everything out to dry in the roof garden, in the sunshine, so that can get nice and dry. And while I was out here, I noticed that the mirror looked quite nice out on the roof garden. So that gave me an idea that perhaps we could use these outdoors. I'm not sure, but let me know what you think. Back inside, I'm taking some self-hardening white clay that I picked up from Tiger, just to fill in this little hole in our gnome's hat. So I'm just smoothing that around as best as I can before going on with a coat of all-purpose surface primer from Rust-Oleum. This stuff's really great for all different surfaces before you paint them, and I think already these two are looking much better now they've had a coat of paint. I'm doing the same with the plant pot. 
Again, after a good clean, this is already looking much better, but I do want to change this up a bit, so I'm going on with the primer on this as well. Back inside, I've got some white spirit. Try to get rid of any little bits of dirt and grime that are still on the mirrors inside the trays. I was going to put something on top of this, but now I've decided that I do quite like the reflective mirror, so I'm going to keep that. And now I'm using some cord that I also thrifted, as you saw earlier, to start to try to attach the two trays together. I want them to become like a hanging mirror, the sort of thing that you might see in anthropology. And so I'm just having a go at looping the cord around. I'm really making this up as I go along, but the main thing that I'm trying to do is keep it symmetrical. So you can see me working out each side and then trying to repeat it on the other side, if that makes sense. I can't give you the exact tutorial for this because really I was just making it up as I go along, just creating a series of loops on either side through the handles of the tray. But as you can see, the main thing that I am doing is just trying to keep it symmetrical. So there were a few mistakes along the way, but I just kept going until I was happy with the end result. The nice thing about using this cord in this way is, of course, you could always reuse it on a future project as well. We're not using any glue here, so I am simply just looping and tying as I go, which is really great because when I do get bored of this DIY, I can always repurpose the trays and the cord for something else. So I'm tying a knot to sort of secure off the triangle tray before moving on to attaching the cords to the hexagonal one. And I'm doing the same thing here, just looping it through and then creating a pattern as I go. We're just playing here really, so do be creative if you do something similar yourself. And I quite like the idea of the cords going across in front of the mirror. I'm a bit sad that the mirror's scratched, but never mind. I still think it reflects quite nicely, so it will still bounce some light back into the room wherever I do decide to hang it. Maybe it will end up out in the roof garden. So I'm just finishing off by threading the last two cords through into the tray and then snipping them off to hang down. And here we have it. Let me know what you think. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I do think it looks quite nice. And yeah, for the time being, it's hanging in the spare room in amongst the plants. Onto this broken chair, let's see if we can fix this. So the first thing I'm doing is inspecting it just to see why it has fallen apart. And I've noticed that some of these brackets need tightening. So I'm going in with a hammer and then a screwdriver just to make sure that they're as tight as they should be. Sometimes chairs just get a little bit loose. So go in and have a look. Then I'm using some of this hard as nails glue that I found. I'm just working with stuff that I have got at home already. And this says it's suitable for wood. So I'm using that to glue the chair back together, banging it with the hammer just to make sure that that's all nicely secured into place. And then I've got these furniture touch up marker pens. I actually picked these up from Poundland just to go in over any scratches on the chair. I was thinking of painting this, but I do quite like the wood on here. Although it's quite damaged, I think with a little touch up with the pens and some polish, I think it will be looking as good as new. I'm now going to go on with some Rust-Oleum furniture wax, just with a rag and give it all a good polish just to bring out the grain in the wood. And as you can see, this is helping the color come through as well. It's starting to turn a really nice kind of mahogany, slightly cherry color, which I think looks really nice for this kind of design of chair. Next up, we're going to work on the plant pot again. So I'm using this stone effect spray from Rust-Oleum. This is a great product. It's kind of like a pebble dash in a can, a very fine pebble dash, shall we say. So you can go on with a couple of coats of this to build up a stone effect. So this pot's gonna to start to look a bit concrete-like. And then I'm gonna go on with some of this gunmetal spray onto our gnomes so they can be sparkling when they're outside in the sunshine. Next up, we're going to look at the seat of the chair. So I've got this wallpaper that's actually quite strong. So I'm using some of this paper glue. You could use maybe some wallpaper paste or something similar just to kind of adhere it into position before I secure it properly. And the good thing about a glue like this is that you can move the paper around as you're trying to figure out whereabouts to put it. So now I'm happy with the position of the paper. I'm just smoothing it out and trimming off any excess with a pair of scissors. 
before going in with the glue gun. A staple gun would have been handy here, but I can't seem to find mine. I think it's in the loft somewhere, so the glue gun will do for this. I'm just using that all the way around, securing the paper as I go. As I say, this is quite a strong paper, but I probably won't be sitting on this chair too often, so it won't be getting too much use. If you wanted to, you could use maybe something like a cheesecloth instead, or some fabric, which obviously would last a little bit longer, but for this purpose, I think for a sort of a more decorative piece, this will do the job, and here it is finished. I think it looks really fab, and I love the design of the palm trees on the seat. Now for the coasters, so I wasn't sure what to do with these but then I thought maybe we could try to create some bunting. So I'm just going on with some black acrylic paint, just straight from the tube using a paintbrush to spell out the words stay home. I thought this was a nice kind of saying for the current time so that's what I'm doing but obviously you could write anything that you like, you could maybe create a celebration banner or maybe put someone's name on it if you want to hang it in their room. And I'm just freestyling this, but you could print out some stencils and have a go at using some of those as well if you prefer, or even just use some stickers. Next up, I'm using some baker's twine that I picked up from Amazon to create the string to hang it up with. So I'm just going on the top of each one with a little line of glue from the hot glue, just to make sure that the letters are going to hang the right way up and nicely spaced out. So I'm just freestyling this again but you could sort of measure the gaps in between with a ruler if you wanted to be more precise and finally I'm just hanging it on the mantle I think it looks really nice hanging there and yeah really pleased with that one so these two are dry now I've had to give them a name and for the time being I'm calling them Hermione and Catherine after my YouTube buddies we're just taking a selfie here together and I should mention Hermione as well who's inspired me to get this mirror ball which is currently hanging in the landing giving off lots of pretty patterns and here they are outside living their best life so the pot's all dry that's looking really good and I'm placing it into a Poundland plant stand that I used on a previous um, little DIY but I'm really happy with how this is looking with a artificial plant from Primark placed inside there we go I really hope you enjoyed these charity shop DIYs with me let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite if you're new here do click subscribe for weekly videos and do give this video a thumbs up if you'd enjoy it and if you'd like to see more ones like this don't forget you can also always catch me over on Instagram if you'd like to see how I style pieces around my home you can find me over on Mr Carrington home which is where I share all of that kind of thing. And I've also got my main account, which is Mr. Carrington, where I keep you up to date of what I'm doing day to day on my stories as well. So I'd love to see you over there too. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.